Welcome to worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Santa Fe. Our congregation was established in 1893 as the Presbyterian Spanish-speaking church in Santa Fe. We continue to honor our language tradition by worshiping bilingually. If you need translations from Spanish into English, you can find them in the bulletin located in the description box below this video. The Sunday following Pentecost, May 30, we will receive the Pentecost special offering. The Pen Pentecost offering helps provide opportunities for young people to grow and share their faith in Christ. The offering is split between our congregation, national youth ministries, and organizations serving at-risk youth. I encourage you to give generously. During this time of COVID, the church building is closed, but we continue to be the church, worshiping God together online. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia de Westminster en Santa Fe. Nuestra congregación se estableció en 1893 como la uh, Iglesia Presbiteriana Hispanoavante en Santa Fe y continuamos adorando bilingües. Si necesito traducciones del inglés al español, puede encontrarlas en el boletín ubicado en el cuadro de descripción debajo de este video. El domingo siguiente a Pentecostés, el 30 de mayo, recibiremos la ofrenda especial de Pentecostés. La ofrenda ayuda a brindar oportunidades para que los jóvenes crezcan y compartan su fe en Cristo. La ofrenda se divide entre nuestra congregación, ministerios juveniles nacionales y niños en riesgo. Te animo a dar generosamente. Durante este tiempo de COVID, el edificio de la iglesia está cerrado. Pero seguimos siendo la iglesia adorando a Dios juntos en línea. Este es el día que hizo el Señor. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Dichosos los que sirven a los pobres, for they shall be called the children of God. Dichosos los que comparten la riqueza, for they shall be called the children of God. Dichosos los que trabajan para el bien, for they shall be called the children of God. Dichosos los que viven su fe, for they shall be called the children of God. Dichosos los que dicen la verdad, for they shall be called the children of God. Dichosos los que muestran el amor de Cristo, for they shall be called the children of God. Let us worship God. Somos un pueblo nacido desde el agua y el espíritu. 
Hemos hecho promesas de ser discípulos fieles de Cristo y de mostrar su amor hasta el final de nuestra vida. Aunque no cumplimos esos votos bautismales, el amor fiel de Dios perdura para siempre. Confiados en la gracia de Dios, confesemos nuestro pecado y el pecado de este mundo. Confession. O oh Lord our God, you call us to work for a world where we all will be fed and have dignity. But we find ourselves distracted by our own desires. You call us to seek justice and peace. But we are satisfied with injustice and discord. You call us to bring liberty to the oppressed. But we do not insist on freedom for all. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Turn us to your will by the power of your Spirit, so that all may know your justice and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Garantía de perdón. Escuchen las buenas nuevas. El amor de Dios fue derramado en nuestros corazones a través del don del Espíritu Santo. Declaro en el nombre de Jesucristo. Somos perdonados. Demos gracias a Dios. Let us pray. Speak to us, O oh God, with the voice of your Holy Spirit, that we might know the way of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes to us from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Listen for God's word. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. For I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these who are members of my family. You did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. La lectura bíblica se encuentra en Mateo capítulo 25. Cuando el Hijo de Hombre venga, rodeado de esplendor y de todos sus ángeles, se sentará en su trono glorioso. La gente de todas las naciones se reunirá delante de él, y él separará unos de otros como el pastor separa las ovejas de las cabras. 
pondrá las ovejas a su derecha y las cabras a su izquierda, y dirá el rey a los que estén a su derecha, Vengan ustedes, los que han sido bendecidos por mi Padre. Reciban el reino que está preparado para ustedes desde que Dios hizo el mundo. Pues tuve hambre, y ustedes me dieron de comer. Tuve sed, y me dieron de beber. Anduve como forastero, y me dieron alojamiento. Estuve sin ropa, y ustedes me la dieron. Estuve enfermo, y me visitaron. Estuve en la cárcel, y vin vinieron a verme. Entonces las justos preguntarán, Señor, ¿cuándo te vimos con hambre y te dimos de comer? ¿O cuándo te vimos con sed y te dimos de beber? ¿O cuándo te vimos como forastero y te dimos alojamiento o sin ropa y te la dimos o cuando te vimos enferma o en la cárcel y fuimos a verte el rey les contestará les aseguro que todo lo que hicieron por uno de estos hermanos míos más humildes por mí mismo lo hicieron luego el rey dirá a los que estén a su izquierda Apártense de mí, los que merecieron la condenación. Váyanse al fuego eterno preparado para el diablo y sus ángeles. Pues tuve hambre, y ustedes no me dieron de comer. Tuve sed, y no me dieron de beber. Anduve como forastero, y no me dieron alojamiento. Sin ropa, y no me la dieron. Estuve enfermo, y en la cárcel y no vinieron a visitarme. Entonces ellos le preguntarán, Señor, ¿cuándo te vimos con hambre o con sed, o como forastero, o falto de ropa, o enfermo, o en la cárcel, y no te ayudamos? El rey les contestará, les aseguró que todo lo que, que no hicieron por una de estas personas más humildes, Tampoco por mí lo hicieron. Esos irán al castigo eterno, y los justos a la vida eterna. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. When I was a senior in high school, I had what one might call a religious epiphany. Without that moment, that epiphany, I suspect I would not have heard or perhaps would not have acknowledged God's call into ministry for me in this deeply beloved and flawed institution we call the church. Most people have their religious epiphanies in the wilderness, physically or metaphorically. Moments of clarity often arrive through crisis, when something in our lives or in the world around us has thinned the veil, the dim mirror, to misquote Paul, has become momentarily clear. My moment, though, my thin place of religious epiphany, Disney World, February 2006. Yes, the happiest place on earth was, strangely enough, where I first saw clearly into the heart of my own faith, the faith I was developing as I grew into adulthood, the faith that had been nurtured by my family and my church. You see, my friend had told me about a conference that he and his youth group were going to at Disney World, and I was like, sounds great, have fun. And then he said, some magic words. No, it's called Faith in 3D, and it's aimed at Episcopalians like us, cooperative Baptists, 
and Presbyterians. And so this is how my two best friends and I wrangled a senior year trip to Disney World out of our church and our parents. It wasn't really a trip to Disney World, it was a church conference. It was totally a trip to Disney World. The three of us, plus my mom as our chaperone, flew to Florida. As Minnesotans, we represented both the furthest north and the furthest west group of youth. Faith in 3D, which ran until 2017, always took place on the weekend before the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, and it always centered around justice. And honestly, beyond the sheer joy of a pass to Disney, it was a really amazing conference. It's the first time I can remember being utterly spellbound by a preacher. And though I no longer remember the full theme of that weekend, I know that it was about economic and labor justice. After each worship service, we gathered in small groups to have conversation with other groups and leaders from other states and other denominations. And after one service, where the preacher discussed labor rights and practices as topics Christians should care about when they spend their money, our group facilitator opened the floor for discussion and one of the youth group leaders immediately jumped in. I thought this was supposed to be a faith conference, she said. This is all social justice politics. It has nothing to do with Jesus. I can still remember that moment I was sitting on a concrete floor in a hallway next to a young woman from Puerto Rico whose translator had not shown up, doing my best to translate for her. The floor was cold, and I struggled to translate that youth group leader's comment because I felt gut punched by it. In that moment, I knew to the very core of my being that for me, Jesus and social justice went hand in hand. That for me, following Jesus meant working for the flourishing of all life, meant paying attention to injustices and inequities and doing something about them. That my faith and my desire for an equitable society were inextricably linked that like the preacher, I believed that I should put my money where my faith was and pay attention to the labor practices and policies of the companies I was supporting. Throughout our scriptures, we are called to work for the common good, for the flourishing of all life. The exemplars of faith we see are always doing something about the injustices they see. An inner spiritual life coupled with an outer life of public service. To ignore one is to ignore the other. We cannot separate our faith and our public life. In Matthew 25, the sheep and the goats are not judged on their inner spiritual lives, but their actions. Did they care for those in need? Do we? Westminster, we do an amazing job at tending to the immediate needs of our community. Our Matthew 25 fund has helped 90 individuals and families remain in their homes since it was begun 
just over a year ago. When we get a request from Pete's place, you immediately work to fill that need. Members show up month after month after month, even in a pandemic, to cook meals at two different shelters. You all do amazing work feeding the hungry, providing drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, visiting the sick. There's a reason we're called the little church with the big heart. And that reason is the care you show your neighbors. One of the things the Matthew 25 initiative is challenging us and all who sign on to it to do is to widen our focus, to look more broadly at the immediate needs we are filling and ask why those needs are there. What are the structures and systems in place that create those needs? And how can we help create a society that looks like God's kingdom come here on earth? I'll warn you, that kind of work is a long, hard slog. Policies, systems, structures, they don't change overnight. Sometimes it takes decades. Sometimes it takes centuries. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. We do these things and we do them regularly and to the best of our ability. Yet it doesn't take long to look at the myriad of ways we have to support people who can't fully support themselves, to know that something must be irredeemably broken in our society and in our world. We have created a world that lifts up the wealthy at the expense of those who have worked to make them so, a world that cares more about getting more than it does about the lives destroyed in that pursuit. We care for the least among us, aiding them as they acquire basic necessities for life, shelter, food, water, clothing. And we do that work because our system is not set up to ensure those things for all people and indeed often works against them. We aid families with two working parents and a working high school student whose cumulative pay is simply too low to provide for shelter, heat, water, electricity, and food, let alone anything else that might be of comfort or delight. Matthew 25, both the scripture passages and the initiative, call us to look at those systems enforced in the world around us and then to do something about those systems which perpetuate poverty and injustice. Doing something might look like calling your legislators, attending a protest, boycotting an organization, advocating for legislation, signing on in support of or protest against policies. Absolutely, this work is political, and there is nothing wrong with that. Political means relating to the government or the public affairs of a country. Politics and political action determine how our public life is structured and governed. If the church is not involved in our political life, then we lose our ability to help shape the very fabric of our society, the morals and ethics of our communities. A church that exists outside of society 
will become obsolete. This does not mean that the church, any church, should be partisan, should advocate one political party over another, one candidate over another. That is not the work to which we are called. Instead, we are called to create a society that centers the needs of the widow, the orphan, the stranger, the ones kept out and kept on the margins. By almost every measure, the United States is failing its poorest residents. Relative poverty is higher in the United States than in any other peer country. More children live in poverty in the United States than in any other peer country. And our safety net is weaker than that of our peers. And New Mexico ranks at the bottom of all states when it comes to poverty statistics. We are 48th in the nation when it comes to children living in poverty. As the church, as Christians, we are called to follow Jesus Christ, to walk the way he has set before us. We are called to be repairers of the breach, to do justice, to care for our neighbors. Living in a world that allows for the poverty we see both here in New Mexico and the United States and around the globe should be anathema to us. The church is called to be present in the world, to encourage the flourishing of all peoples. We are called to share the good news of the gospel, to proclaim sight to the blind and liberty to the captive, to feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty, to love our neighbors as ourselves. So thanks be to God for the gift of the church, a community to be part of, a community that gives strength to one another, that challenges one another, that loves one another. Through this community, we can help build the kingdom of God here on earth. Thanks be to God. Amen.
that is in it, the world, and all those who live in it. Let us present to God our lives and offerings, grateful for the gifts we have been given. If you are able, I invite you to gather your offerings and prepare them to be delivered to the church. Write a check, put a stamp on an envelope. Let us pray. Bendito eres, oh Dios, creador de todas las cosas. En tu gran bondad nos ha bendecido con estos dones, nuestro ser, nuestro tiempo y nuestras posesiones. Úsanos y usa lo que tenemos para alimentar al mundo con tu amor, por aquel que se dio a sí mismo por su pueblo, Jesucristo, nuestro Señor y Salvador. Amén. Hear these words of scripture. Jesús dice, Vengan ustedes, los que han sido bendecidos por mi Padre, reciban el reino que está preparado para ustedes desde que Dios hizo el mundo. Jesús, Jesús dice, ¿Cuántas veces quise juntar a tus hijos como la gallina junta sus pollitos baja las alas, pero no me quisiste? All are invited to this, the joyful feast of the people of God. At this table, all are welcome, no matter what. God's welcome is wider than we can ever imagine, and we keep the feast with all those whom Christ invites across time and space as we await his coming again. El Señor sea con ustedes y también contigo. Eleven sus corazones. Los elevamos al Señor. Demos gracias a nuestro Dios. Es digno y justo darle gracias y alabanzas. Holy, holy, holy Lord, we praise you for your love bringing order out of chaos, breathing life into dust, leading captives into freedom, calling wandering children home, giving bread to the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, raising the dead to life. Santo, 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 Señor, Dios Todopoderoso, llenos están los cielos y la tierra de tu gloria. Osana en las alturas. Bendito sea el que viene en el nombre de, del Señor. Hosanna en las alturas. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for Jesus. Word made flesh, light of the world, living water, shepherd and gate, way and truth, bread of heaven, cup of salvation, resurrection and life. Damos gracias porque en la noche antes de morir, El Señor tomó en sus manos el pan, y después de haber dado gracias, lo partió y dijo, Esto es mi cuerpo dado por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria de mí. Así también, después de la cena, tomó la copa y dijo, Esta copa es el nuevo pacto confirmado en mi sangre. Cada vez que beban, háganlo en memoria de mí. De esta manera, proclamamos la muerte del Señor, Hasta que el vuelva. Take this bread and cup, O God, a feast of grace. Take our hearts and lives, an offering of praise. Cristo ha muerto. Cristo ha resucitado. Cristo vendrá otra vez. Spirit, come, come and live in us, in this bread, in this cup, in your people, one in the body, one in the blood, one with Christ, one in ministry, in this place, in every place, in this world, in the world to come. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power forever and ever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad como en el cielo, así también en la tierra. 
el pan nuestro de cada día, danoslo hoy. Y perdonanos nuestras deudas, como también perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos deje caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por todos los siglos. Amén. Jesús dice, Dichosos los que tienen hambre y sed de la justicia, porque serán satisfechos. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this feast of grace and life. As we have been served, help us to serve our neighbors. As we have been fed, help us to feed all who are hungry. As we have been loved, help us to love the world. Because in Jesus Christ, you have loved us. Amen.
And now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, heal the afflicted, honor and encourage all people, rejoicing in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to share God's peace with one another, either in the chat box here to the side or in the comments below, or by sending a text message, an email, giving someone a phone call. You could even send them a card.